Ooh, shiny, which is not ideal when you're recording things, you can see everything in the vicinity, but that's okay. It is what we have and we should work with it. This is a water distiller. It's designed for purifying water. You basically take the top of it off. Let me just pull the top of it off. You fill it with water and you then plug it in with this uh, fan assisted cooling unit on top and it boils the water and then recondenses it and th the result of that is extremely pure water. You have the option with this one, you've got a little cartridge here that can come out, you can put uh, carbon granules in there, usually a little sachet like a tea bag and it will provide even purer water. But these things are used not just for water, they can be used for oil and they can be used for uh, well, ethanol, if you are so inclined, but this one isn't really optimised for ethanol. So let's take a look at what's inside to start off with. So we have a switch on it, a resettable switch, because this is a thermal switch. It will cut out when the thing boils dry. That's how it detects when it's finished the cycle, because the residual water, uh, once it's boiled off, it, the temperature rises quite suddenly, and that uh, causes this to trip out and turns it off. Uh, it has a power inlet, an IEC connector. This thing is rated 750 watts, 220, 240. You get them for the, whatever voltage is in your neighbourhood. Um, and 750 watt in this case is great for water, but not great for some other things. Uh, it also has an output, which is used to actually power the fan in the top of this. You can see the fan blades sticking in there. Let's cut straight to the chase. Uh, and open this up. So on the bottom, it has, I'll just focus down that. It has a single nut in the middle usually. I think, don't think I need to take these screws out. I think they're purely for holding the feet on. I'll find out soon enough. The nut is off. Is this base going to lift off now? Yes, it is. What does it reveal? Well, for a start, that's actually released the whole inner mechanism. So we've got the power coming in. We've got the heating element is actually bonded straight onto the bottom here. It's, uh, this is uh, interesting because they often just kind of spot weld it onto the bottom, but this one's actually got a plate here. It probably is still spot welded. Excuse me while I look on the other side. There's no obvious spot welding marks in there. Um, We've got the thermal trip switch here, which is a standard pop-out uh, thermal cutout that all you're doing by pressing that button is pushing that back in again. This little thing here is just designed as a spacer by the look of it. We've also got a secondary thermal cutout, presumably in case that one fails and it will uh, kill the power if needs be. I wonder if, wonder if it's just, a, I think it's self-resetting. Um, is there a thermal fuse? I don't think there is. I think that's it. We've got the automatic cutout there and then we've got this secondary one. And that is about it. Uh, the incoming supply, the uh, the colours are all the same. One connection goes straight to... Well, one connection goes via the cutout uh, to a connection there. The other one comes via this to... There. All right, so both the, the live and neutral are going via cutouts. That makes sense because you can get a fault that if the heating element goes to earth, it can actually, you can get current flowing to earth uh, via the heating element. It means that switches won't work if, uh, if, the, uh, if live is going straight to the unit. So they've cut, broken both live and neutral. So depending on which polarity it is, because uh, you can sometimes live and neutral get swapped over, that's a precaution against that. There's not really much in it, is there? Let's take a look in the, the other part that is much more interesting. This bit here. I shall focus down onto that. So this uh, is where the steam goes up and then there's a little cover over the pipe and then inside, I'm going to have to take some screws out for this. Let's see if I can find a suitable screwdriver. Noting that the screws are very awkward to get in these things. Let me just uh, take the silicone rubber seal off and see, is this going to fit? It's kind of going to fit. It's the wrong screwdriver size. Let's try one that is more appropriate. Is this going to be better? Yes, it is. So I've got what looks like three screws holding this in. I shall take this thing out at the moment because it's not really needed. 
So why would you distill water? Uh, water out the tap has impurities in it. And some people live in very high mineral areas where it's hard water. And it's just nice to be able to create very pure water because when it boils, the steam carries up the pure water, but it leaves all the impurities behind. So in that tank over there, you end up with uh, all the crusty deposits at the bottom. And the water that comes out is almost 100% pure. Uh, it's also useful for technical applications where you want to maybe top off a lead acid battery and you don't want impurities in it. Or you want to make smoke fluid where you also don't want impurities. In the case of the smoke fluid, it's because uh, any solids in the water, dissolved in the water, will basically uh, form a crusty coating on the heater tube in smoke machines and it will uh, block them very quickly. Cheap smoke fluid does that. Righty ho, so this is looking promising. I think it's looking promising. Is it looking promising? No, it's not. It's not looking promising at all. Oh, no, no, I lie. It's actually come off as two chunks like this. So here is a standard shaded pole motor going on to a metal fan. And the fan pulls air in from the top of the unit and uh, then it goes out through the sides. And the tube... Is that aluminium or stainless? Do I have a magnet? Magnet's not going to super help much because they're proper stainless. I think it's probably going to be aluminium. But uh, the liquid comes up from down here, travels just a single loop round, uh, well, one and a half loops, and then goes out. And as it cycles round this uh, aluminium tube, it uh, condenses back out with the cooling of the fan, and then theoretically then liquid drops out the bottom. Now, interestingly, this one doesn't have what some others do. They have a little pinhole at the top where the pipe comes up that lets volatiles vaporise off, um, which absolutely is terrible. If you, if you make uh, anything that you need all the volatiles, like the oils and, well, spirits, uh, you have to block that hole with something in these, otherwise you'll lose a lot of it. But this one honestly looks like it's... Uh, hold on, is there anything I can do here that's going to test this? I shall test that afterwards. And I'll leave a note down in the description just to say uh, if, it, if there was a hole in it somewhere, but I don't think there is. Makes me wonder if this one is aimed at the distiller community. Uh, the fan is connected with little bullet crimps here. That's interesting. Uh, but that is fundamental. It The water boils, the steam goes up, it goes up this tube, it gets cooled back down by this continually uh, spinning fan blowing air through. It recondenses and what drips out is the water with all the impurities left behind. That is fundamentally how a distiller works. Um, so hacks that some people do. You can power the fan usually directly from 240 volts on its own, which means that if you bring over, if I bring over this other unit, the base of it, which means that the feed that's going into this, you can actually theoretically, I'll just focus down that again. Uh, you can theoretically put a dimmer in that because all it's doing is controlling the heating element at that point. Uh, you could also theoretically put a fairly decently sized diode inside side in series and that would half the power, in this case down to about 325 watts-ish. Not an ideal electrical load, but it would do the job. Uh, and that would result in a much slower distillation for more critical things. Um, but that's fundamental. It's very, very simple. Uh, not a lot to it. If you do use a dimmer on the... Uh, input to this, you definitely can't plug the fan in because the fan will require uh, a continuous full mains voltage supply. But that's all there is in them. It's very straightforward. A boiling chamber and then a condensing section on top. And that is a water distiller.